All right, in this next series of tutorials, we're gonna go over the process of creating a grasshopper. And so I was lucky enough to uh, work with the library here and uh, one of my former students and grad student um, uh, lent me some of these images and also the processes that she uses to create a uh, grasshopper. So the first part is they have the amazing collection here of different uh, species of insects and basically all she does and um, two uh, CT grad students actually uh, this is what they do all day is kind of photogrammetry which is basically a series of maybe hundreds or 200 to 300 photos of, uh, of insect and so here we've got a grasshopper and you can see we're just kind of rotating sometimes you use a lazy Susan or something to spin around this object and try to keep it centered and this is done in a photo booth, so there's a nice uh, adequate light around it and also a white background. So basically the software kind of stitches these together and creates a point cloud and from a point cloud to a pretty good um, object file. And that is where uh, the artist, uh, we will clean that up. And so basically um, this student, that's all she does is clean this up and hopefully we'll have uh, her come in and talk to the class about what she does and what's fun and what's uh, challenging about this project. So again, we have uh, two grad students uh, doing this also as part of their uh, GA. So this is kind of what it looks like. Um, sometimes it comes out pretty rough. So this is a low res uh, version of the grasshopper. And this is what we're gonna be using as kind of a fill in to get our um, modeling skills up to par. All right, so we're gonna import this in. So typically we uh, put a front and a side and a top view, kind of like what we did with the dumpster. Uh, but this, we're gonna actually put an object in. So we're just gonna do some box modeling. Um, there's also another technique I may uh, show you guys how to retope it, which is a little bit lengthier, but um, definitely if you're gonna be cleaning up data like this, you'll wanna have a good retoped uh, object before you go into ZBrush, but we're just going to do some box modeling because we just want to kind of quickly get into um, ZBrush and then uh, obviously ZBrush into Substance so we can try our best to make this look realistic. All right, so one of the first things I want to do is go ahead and show you how to get into um, uh, Maya, and we're going to create a box um, feature that does symmetry. So this is a, a technique. Um, use uh, for modeling. So we're gonna give it a shot and I may screw it up, but uh, we'll see. So we're gonna go into modeling and we're gonna go ahead and create a polygon uh, cube. And so that's gonna pop into here. All right, so what we wanna do is kind of split this, but when I start to do something on this side of a cube, I want symmetry to happen over here and we also wanna lock it down. So this goes back to maybe almost 12, 15 years ago when I was modeling uh, this in Maya, uh, this is the same technique I use today. And basically, you don't wanna have to model two sides, you just do wanna do one side, and then when you're done, we'll uh, duplicate special, the final one, and then uh, uh, seam it together. And we've done that before with the merge vertices in the past. All right, so we're gonna go to object mode, make sure you're object mode, and we're gonna hit shift, and shift and right click, and we're gonna insert edge loop tool. And right here, uh, if we reset the tool, uh, this is what we usually have it at, but we're gonna hit the multiple edge loops. And usually that is on two, so we wanna hit uh, one, enter, uh, make sure that's on one and enter. And uh, so when I click on this, it'll snap it into the center. Let's cross our fingers. All right, so you can see, I uh, click, and I'm trying, I'm trying to even move it around, and you can see it's kind of stuck in the center. That's exactly what we want. We kind of want this dead center. We don't want it off by a millimeter or by a hair. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is go ahead, go back to object mode, and then we're gonna go to right-click face. Um, I know I should have some pop-ups uh, explaining what uh, hotkeys I'm hitting, but I need to learn how to do that. Maybe someone can help me today do that. Uh, so we're gonna hit a uh, face. Um, and it's selecting a lot of faces. And so I'm gonna have to go 
let's go object mode and symmetry settings. I think it's got some uh, this set on right now, so I'm going to go ahead and hit off. So that way I can go to face. Uh, and I want to delete these. So I'm just selecting all of those. All right, we'll get back to this in a second. You probably won't have to do this. Uh, but for me, I had to do it because it was default set it. So anyways, we're going to select that uh, left side of that box. And we're wanting to duplicate this. All right. And you'll see why in just a second. You're, you're probably asking, why is he doing that? But you'll see in a second that it's a real lifesaver. All right, so we're going to go object mode. We're going to go edit and duplicate by uh, special. Go to the dialog box. I'm going to pop that open. And I'm going to go ahead and reset my settings. And typically, when we do a duplicate special, everything is at 111, and we do a copy. This time, we want to do an instance. And on our scale X, we want to hit a negative. Okay, and so that's going to do a, a symmetrical uh, duplicate in an instance. Uh, this will be related to it, so it has like a parent or a partnership with it. So we're going to go ahead and hit duplicate special. And if you see, uh, if I come over here and I grab one of these, you see it's selected on the other side. So that's what that instance was. So I'm going to hit W, and you can see. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, when I move it around, uh, it moves it on the other side. All right. So I'm going to hit Command Z one more time, make sure we're all right. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this side. And we're going to go back to um, our marquee tool and go to tool settings. And what we want to do is preserve this uh, middle section right here. So if I hit W, um, I could accidentally split that open. So we don't want that to happen. So we're going to go into uh, into our move settings and we're going to move down to symmetry settings. And you'll see this and it has symmetry right here. And what we want to do is hit object X. All right. So now if, if I select it, you can see it's locked. So if I try to move it, it's locked. But I can go up and side, but I can't pull it apart. I can't unseam it. All right, so I'm just going to hit Command Z. All right. So one last thing that we want to do is we don't want to actually select this all the time. So we're going to go ahead into our layers, create an empty layer, and we're going to add selected object. All right. So if we hit R uh, or T, we can still see it, um, but we can't select it but it still will uh, move with that piece. So this is really golden for us for our, our modeling that we're going to be doing. All right, so we're going to stop um, in just a second, but one last thing I like to do is add a little transparency to that. So we're going to go to uh, rendering, and we've all done this before. We're going to add uh, assign new material. We're going to do a Lambert, and uh, we're going to go way over here, my Lambert 2, and change the color a little bit. And also, I'm going to knock this transparency uh, a little bit. So there's a little bit uh, of something there. So when we click off of it, it doesn't look completely um, barren. All right, so you can change some other stuff up, too. Uh, we could uh, go to our shading. We could do. Uh, flat selected shading. I kind of like that uh, when you're doing it or uh, actually I like, let's see here, what do I like? We'll keep it like that. Sometimes I like it shaded, but I like the blue line and I can't quite figure out what that is right now. Dot it with smooth shade selected items. All right, so it has to be selected. All right, so I'm just going to go back to uh, smooth all. All right, so I'm going to keep that and uh, put this on R. All right, and so that basically locks it in. All right, so if we go to face, 
uh, what we've done before and extrude face and I pull this out I hit G and I extrude face it does the same thing over here it's keeping up those appearances all right and I hit W and I start uh, modeling it it's going to do the same on this side so I'm going to stop there and on the next tutorial we're going we're gonna to import the grasshopper and then we're just going to start modeling okay so I'm going to give you about three or four tutorials today and then we'll stop and then hopefully next class we'll finish up uh, the Maya modeling and then next week uh, it's all about ZBrush all right so I'm going to Apple Z this and just make sure you save this and as a uh, go ahead and start your sequential save so you have this as 001 all right good luck